please rise and join in our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you. We gather as a church throughout the world this day to celebrate the Feast of All Saints. This celebration goes all the way back to the fourth century as we remember and honor all those who, faithful to the gospel call of Jesus, offer their lives in faithful witness to the Lord. We gather as God's people to be inspired by their lives and to follow in their footsteps. For the times that we have failed to do so, we pause and ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you send us forth as faithful witnesses to the good news. Lord, have mercy. Lord. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we pray the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were giving power, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing the white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from this first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. 
yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, and he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, the disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. For those who are new to our parish since last celebration of All Saints a year ago or the feast of our patron Sebastian, the candle that's lit under the altar is rests on top of a relic, a piece of the bone of Saint Sebastian. We're really privileged as our parish to have a relic of our patron uh, buried beneath the altar and that was buried on the day that this church was dedicated in April in 2007. So we're blessed to uh, celebrate uh, the presence a reminder of that communion with our own patron and all the saints that we celebrate today. Father Michael McGivney lived during the second half of the 19th century, ordained a priest in 1877, served in New Haven, Connecticut, and in his Short span as a priest, he died at the age of 38 from a pandemic that existed back then, uh, 1890 rather, at the age of 38. And during his time as a priest, he worked hard to help immigrants settle into the community. He established what is now known as the Knights of Columbus, this great fraternal organization international. We have our own really wonderful and active council here. Many of you who I see belong to it. But Father McGivney established his organization to provide for the needs of widows and orphans, people who had lost their husbands and their fathers, and to establish a fellowship which could support them as they settled into the community and celebrated their Catholic faith. Carlos Acutis, a teenager in Milan, Italy, who was quite proficient at his computer screen, as most teenagers are, 
And during his time, he spent time documenting the Eucharistic miracles. We'd research them all and catalog them. He had great devotion to the Eucharist and to the celebration and prayer of the rosary. And also during that time, he went out to serve the poor in his community. And he would stand up for other young people that were being bullied in school. In 2006, he died at the age of 15 from leukemia. And during his struggle and battle with that cancer, he offered up his suffering for the church and bore courageous witness in his dying to his faith and hope in Jesus Christ. So Father Michael McGivney in the second half of the 19th century dies at the age of 38 in 1890. Carlos Acutis dies in the year 2006 at the age of 15. What is their common thread? In the month of October, the church beatified them, the process of beatification, which is the final step before canonization, which is the official recognition of an individual as a saint. Miraculous actions were ascribed to both of them, and miracle healings that took place. And so at the beginning of October, Carlos Acutas was beatified, and just yesterday in Hartford Cathedral of St. Joseph, Father Michael McGivney was beatified as well. We remember them this day because they're on the path to being acknowledged as saints. But not just them. All of us here should be on that same path. Each and every one of us are called to the path of holiness. And while the church will select a few whose lives are well known and publicly demonstrated courage and hope in their faith, we gather today not just to remember them, but to be inspired by them. As we honor their witness, we are challenged to say, Lord, can you give me the grace to bear witness to my faith in you, in all that I say and do, in whatever vocation it is that you call me to? What gives us the desire to do that? Our second reading gives us an insight. As St. John says, we are children of God. We are not just created as something to be made by God on some far-off distant universe, on some far-off distant planet, but God chose to create us and calls us children in intimate relationship and called to this intimate relationship where we are children of the God who created everything. We're called to live that relationship out to respond to the one who breathes life into us, to respond to the one who loves us like no other, so that our lives might be a reflection of what we have been given, the precious gift of life, the precious gift of faith and hope and love. Father McGivney and Carlos Acutis and St. Sebastian and all the holy apostles, and all the holy men and women who for centuries have lived and died for their faith. We remember today, for as Christians, we celebrate our communion with them, that we gather not just alone here and now to worship God, but as we know in our celebration, the profession of our creed, we gather with them who are in communion, who stand in the presence of God, and join in praising God as we come here now to worship our Lord through Jesus Christ. So we thank God for their faithful witness as Carlos and Father McGivney move along the path of holiness to be acknowledged as saints. We now are given the opportunity each and every day to awaken to a new day and say, Lord, give us the grace, the courage deep in our faith that we too might join all the holy ones who stand in your presence to give you praise.
We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as God's people, let us now bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, may we draw strength and perseverance from the witness of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those open to God's call to spread the good news of Jesus Christ as priests, deacons, or consecrated persons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a peaceful and honest election in America, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all citizens exercise their responsibility to vote, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they know Christ's healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the deceased members of our St. Sebastian family, those listed in our Book of Remembrance, David Baird, brother of Bob, and for Donna De Sikander, mother of John, may they praise God with all the angels and the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your daughters and sons who gather on this joyous and ancient feast to celebrate the presence of the holy ones who stand in your presence and join with us now in giving you thanks and praise. And so we come to you with these prayers and those which go unspoken in our hearts. With the faith and hope you'll hear and answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Sebastian, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, the very thought of you, it fills my heart with love. Jesus, you burn like wildfire, and I am overcome. Lover of my soul. 
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder, tomorrow is the Feast of All Souls, and we will celebrate uh, commemoration of our faithful departed with the celebration of Mass here at 6 p.m. in the church. Uh, as during the month of November, we remember in a special way our beloved dead. Uh, if you have lost a member of a family or dear friend in the past year and wish to uh, remember them in a special way, you may bring a photograph of them. Uh, please put the name, their name on the back and your name beneath theirs and drop it off at the parish office or here at church so we can display them uh, on the shelves here in the sanctuary for the month of November. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>